most of the United States outside of towns, the land is covered with roads and covered with development areas. We don't need more of those places. We need to preserve some islands of natural beauty, and there aren't very many of them left. I had this rifle on the side of my motorcycle the first time I went into the Red Desert. And after a week there, I was living off of that land. And I knew from my biological studies that a lot of the cells in your body go away and are replaced by new cells of about every two weeks. So after a month living in the Red Desert, your body has become the Red Desert. <laughs> that if I'd driven in here 500 years ago and there were no Europeans on the continent, it would still look exactly the same and it, the wind would feel the same. I've seen the Red Desert since 1967, and there were oil fields out there then, out in flats. It didn't bother me a bit. There were roads going in there. I'd drive through them and think, that's a good thing we're using the natural resources here. Now, 1979, I think, I'd gone over to the Honeycombs, uh, which was one of my favorite places since the 60s to just go out and get away from the world. And there were oil rigs all over the Honeycombs. I felt an emotional tug, like something happened to my place here. And I thought it was kind of an insult to the land. I didn't know what to think about it, but I was angry. I went to town and talked to the high country news people that were writing about environmental stuff in the early days. And I said, they're destroying the Red Desert. And isn't there anything we can do? First thing he said was, where's the Red Desert? that have heard of it, but I don't know where it is exactly. And that was true of most people in Lander at that time. We had a meeting and decided what areas in the Red Desert should be considered wilderness and just drew circles around those places on some topo map that these areas ought to be wilderness. A lot of people think they're worth preserving and they're being desecrated now by oil companies. So BLM actually did it. We had seven wilderness study areas in the Red Desert within the next six months. So here's my first experience with a government agency that's actually doing something for the environment. And I thought it was a great thing. And they did defend the wilderness study areas out there for a very long time, until recently. A wilderness study area is a designation that was never intended to be permanent, although they've sat around as wilderness study areas now for over 30 years. There have been several congressional attempts from leaders to remove the wilderness study area designation. Even if it's designated as a wilderness study area and you have to have Congress to remove that designation, those pressures are gonna exist in Congress.
there's a really cool air to being in Wyoming, um, just because there's so few people. <laughs> we haven't seen anyone. Running is so great because it's very pure, right? You don't have a lot of gear, and so you can be in an environment with just yourself. You know, your pitter-patter of your feet doesn't interrupt the sounds or the sound of wind or elements. I find it very immersive. When I don't go for a run in a wild place for a while, I feel, uh, like I feel on edge and kind of like less human in a way. Run the Red originated six years ago as an idea to honor the passage of the Wyoming Wilderness Act of 1984. And the race was intended to showcase the Red Desert in, in a sort of way that allowed people to experience the landscape in a quiet way, and running is one of those things. is the biggest thing I feel like that we all can do and what I care most about is, is trying to enact systematic change because me, like driving a Prius doesn't really matter, but me educating and talking to and learning from people in the Red Desert about what's at stake, that is gonna have systematic change more so than, than driving a hybrid. I am inviting all of us to take part in educating ourselves on what's happening. So if it's the red desert you care about or your backyard, just start by Googling. <laughs> what is happening in my backyard? Call me radical, but like, <laughs> I think it's, you know, is it too much to ask to ask for clean air and wild places that you know, three generations, seven generations from now, they are our future family members can enjoy this place. Most of the United States outside of towns, the land is covered with roads and covered with development areas from mining different things and oil development. And, uh, we don't need more of those places. We need to preserve some islands of natural beauty and natural ecosystems. And there aren't very many of them left. Goat song number 54.